Hey, welcome to our show. I'm Dr. Latifat. I'm the host of the Money Feed MD show. This is where we talk about all things money and mindset because I truly believe that when we pair these two things together, it is pretty much impossible for us to not create wealth. So I hope you enjoy the show. Make sure you learn, make sure you take actions, and make sure you share the link to the show with all the humans in your life so that we can all start to do wealth together from the inside out. Enjoy this episode. Welcome, guys, to another episode on the Money Fit MD Show. How are you guys doing? I'm so, so excited that you guys are here. We have a powerful episode today, and I cannot wait to dig in. So first of all, I wanted to just say thank you for listening to this podcast. I'm so glad that you and I have met in this world (laughs) of craziness and this world of everything going on. I want to check in with you to make sure that you're doing well. I am currently recording this episode while we are doing our travel sabbatical, and I think this is like country number 15 or so that we're in. So I'm currently recording this in Nigeria, and it has been such, such a gift being here. It's been so amazing getting to show my kids Nigeria. That's their first time here. It's been powerful seeing their family members seeing their grandparents in their own native land. And we had a chance to celebrate my dad after two years of passing recently. And it was just an amazing, amazing, amazing time. Um, I'm excited about today's episode. And I will tell you a big shout out to the amazing women physicians inside of our money coaching school for badass women physicians. This episode is because of their request about a topic that I believe is gonna be so, so, so helpful for you. It's this whole conversation about paycheck to paycheck living, and I'm sure that you've heard about it. Everybody talks about, you know, stop living paycheck to paycheck. And this is a very, very simple yet powerful question that I was asked, which is what really is paycheck to paycheck living, right? And the reason why this is important is that when we, it's important to know whether there's a problem or not, because like my father used to say, there's literally no problem under the surface, like under the sky, under the heavens that we cannot solve. However, There are times when there really is no problem (laughs) and you may just be creating problems and giving yourself evidence of scarcity that we need to dig into. So today's episode is going to be talking about this whole idea of paycheck to paycheck living and what does it really mean? Which one of it is a problem or problematic that needs to be fixed? And I'll share some tips on how you can fix it and which one of it is more what you would call maybe physiological. So when I think about paycheck to paycheck living, the way that I think about it is that you are waiting for the next paycheck. You're like, cannot wait. <laughs> like You're like holding your breath and like, okay, let this check come in, let this check come in, let this check come in. And when this check comes and you're like, breathe a sigh of relief, like hallelujah, praise the Lord, <laughs> right? And then it happens again every single month where you're like, consciously or subconsciously looking for that next paycheck to come in. And there are times when this may be a problem, but there are other times when it may not be a problem. So I'm going to talk about the part that may be a problem. And again, I want to make sure that you understand that even if this is something that you're struggling with, that this is a problem that can be solved. And that paycheck to paycheck is when you literally have more days in the month than money. You have more days in the month than than money. So what that means is that you are, maybe it's like the 20th and your account is now like negative. You're leaning onto credit cards in order to pay your bills. You're maybe today's the 20th and you're like, I have no money left. I have to swipe my card. Maybe you're someone that like pays, tries to get on top of your credit card payment. But when it comes to this time of the month, you're like going back into that cycle of spending your credit card again because you quote unquote don't have a choice but to use it. Like that is a part that that's a part that we need to fix. The other paycheck to paycheck living is one that is almost like self-imposed. And this is very common when people are in the growth phase of their financial and wealth building life, where you already know what's coming in for you every month, roughly, you know, again, depending on whether you're, you have a fixed income source or whether it's more variable, maybe you, um, own a business, maybe you own your own private practice. And so you may not know exactly perfectly, accurately, what amount is going to be coming in that month. But then you've already set things in, in to position where you're like, okay, this is the amount that's going towards debt payoff. This is the amount that is going towards investing. This is the amount that's going into my 401k, maybe my taxable income. This is the amount that I'm removing from my checking account to go into the account that I've opened where that money is going to be a down payment towards my next investment. So that part is your checking account may be low but it's because you've told the money where to go. 
You've told the money where to go actively. So the money is doing that. So now what you left in your, what's left in your checking account may be lower. And you're like, I like for it to be higher. And when the next paycheck comes in, then, you know, that amount gets, gets more because now it's been replenished. That one is not a pathological or a problem per se, because you are the one that is literally doing the right thing and telling your money where to go. You're paying debt off, you're investing, you're building towards your wealth, right? But for the first people that I just described, that's when the amount of money you're earning doesn't feel like it's enough. Versus the second one where you're earning money, and yes, you'd like to have more, but the reason why your checking account may be low towards the end of the month and feels like it's paycheck to paycheck is because you literally are taking your money towards building assets. You're taking your money and it's going into buying you, increasing your ownership, whether that's through the stock market or physical products or businesses or for the future. Like you have your money, you're telling it where to go. And if you were not doing that, if you were not buying assets, you would have more money in your checking account. That is a good one, <laughs> right? Because I will tell you one thing that I tell people is that for many people, when you have money in your checking account, it will go somewhere. You will use it, right? And when it comes to investing versus spending, I tell people to invest first and then spend the rest. So if your decreased amount in your checking account is because you're investing first, then that is not a problem. That's a good thing. I hope that's making sense to you guys. Again, so there are two different parts. There's the first part where you're not buying assets to so the extent that you would like to, right? And a lot of your money feels like it's not lasting to the extent that you would like it. And you're spending money after that point where you feel like you're low, you're spending money, borrowing money that is going towards things that you think you don't have choices about. It's going towards paying for maintaining the house, buying liabilities, paying credit card up, but not the top line of buying assets and increasing ownership. Regardless of where you fall, again, these are things that we can do something about. It's just a matter of being able to separate between those two because the solutions can be a little bit different. At the end of the day, yes, everybody wants increasing top line stuff, top line money, more income coming in. But the difference is that one person could be having more if they were not buying assets, which again, I want you to buy assets, whereas the first person is not even buying assets because they don't have enough. So you, the season that you're in in life also does matter because when you're in a growth phase, it is not uncommon for you to not have a lot of money sitting down in your account if you're doing things the right way, right? When you are in retirement, for example, if you're like, I have less money than I need every month, then that would be a problem. Because that's not something that we want you to be dealing with at that point. But then if you're early in your journey, if you're in the first 15 years or so post training and any one of this is happening, then you need to ask yourself, am I experiencing this because of where I am in my journey? Or am I experiencing this because I need to find ways to make sure that I'm earning more? I need to make sure I'm finding where my money is going. Maybe you're someone that has money leaks and your money is going into places you don't even know where it's going, but you're earning a good amount. And then it feels like at the end of the month, there literally is nothing left and you're not buying assets. Like that part needs to be changed. And if you're someone that belongs in that category, what I want you to do is go find me on Instagram because I have, I have an amazing resource that may be helpful for you. And what it is, it's... Um, PDF document that I created that literally goes through how to find your money leak. So if you find me on Instagram with MoneyFitMD or Latifa Akintade and just send me a DM, send me a message that says paycheck, then what I will do is myself or all my team members will send you a copy of that PDF so that you can make sure that you access that and find what your money leaks are. And the reason why this is important is that this is so, it's a low hanging fruit. And when I've had people do this exercise, they literally find like high hundreds or thousands of dollars that they did not even know that they were spending. And when they're able to fix that leak, they now have more money accessible that they can now start using to buy assets and increase their ownership. Those are the first categories that I talked about. So again, if you belong in that, then send me a message, send me a DM on Instagram and just say paycheck and you will be able to get this free reference guide that I have used myself, the women in my program I've used, like I've had hundreds of women physicians use this document and the feedback that I've gotten has been amazing. It's simple and effective. Okay. For y'all that are in the second category, it is completely normal that when you tell your money where to go, 
it may no longer be in your checking account. You are the one that's causing that. And it's not a bad problem. It's a good problem. It may mean that you're doing things the right way. The only challenge, of course, when you are now looking at your checking account and you're making that be a reason to justify a scarcity mindset that may already exist. Meaning that maybe you already think I don't have enough. It's never going to be enough. And now you're looking at your checking account and using that as evidence to say that, see, I don't have enough. I'm going to run out. It's never going to be enough. Like that is a mindset stuff that needs to be taken care of. That is scarcity mindset that needs to be taken care of. Right. However, if you're someone that you're like, this is the challenge for me then what I'm going to recommend for you is to zoom out a little bit because right now you're so zoomed into the day-to-day -day stuff that you're not seeing the big picture. And the big picture, that I'm big picture that I'm talking about goes back to the calculation of your financial net worth. If you're listening to this podcast and you're not keeping track of your financial net worth, my question is why the heck are you not doing that? The financial net worth is a number that looks at the assets that you have, so things that have value that you could sell for a dollar amount and things that are liabilities that do not add towards your financial positive net worth. And the sum total of your assets minus your liability gives you net worth. You don't have to calculate that manually. There are calculators out there that are calculated for you. There are systems like Mint, Personal Capital is one of my favorite ones that helps you look at your financial net worth. And what I found is that when people are ignoring this number, they literally are shooting themselves in the foot. Like I shared some information with some of the women in my program where I showed them a curve, a map, that's more of a curve than a map, a curve of someone that had been monitoring her financial net worth for like 10, 15 years. And they could see the upstroke of what was happening over time of her doing this simple, effective, yes, consistent things that can build her net worth and went from like negative I think it was like negative 300 K or so to multiple seven figures within that span of time, like in the eight figure, actually not even seven figures with like eight figures financial net worth. But the only reason why we were able to see that and they were able to be an example of what's possible was because they were monitoring that number. When you're not monitoring your financial net worth, you literally are shooting yourself in the foot because it prevents you from being able to look back in future and give yourself a high five and also show people what you, what can be possible for them. So, and I get it. There are reasons why people may not want to look at their financial net worth. And sometimes it's because maybe you're worried about what you're going to see or you just don't know how to do it. But what I want to challenge you on is if you're someone where your paycheck to paycheck is because you're doing the right things, but yet your brain is freaking out, zooming out and looking at your financial net worth can be helpful, especially when you compare it with what it was in the past, because now you can see the trajectory that's going up. And yes, there's going to be seasonalities, like some ups and downs with the, you know, with the market, maybe the stock market is down and all this other stuff. But in general, you want the overall trend to be going up. And if the overall trend is going up, then I want you to stare at that number for as long as you can until you stop freaking out, because this is not a problem to be solved. And again, guys, I think part of it is we're so obsessed with cash in our culture. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with cash, but the overall obsession with, with cash and seeing the dollars in our bank account can actually limit you in your ability to invest because you're so stuck on cash. You're so obsessed with cash. You're so afraid of feeling uncomfortable with not seeing cash that you're like, I'm not going to invest. I'm not going to let my money work for me because I'd rather see it hanging out here in front of my eyes, hiding under the pillow or in my bra. <laughs> Yes, I'm talking to you. So anyway, so this is something that I just want to talk about because if we're talking about growing your financial net worth, if we're talking about breaking the cycles of paycheck to paycheck living, I want to make sure that you know what side you fall on. And again, if you fall in that part, that's number one, then send me a message call, You know, on Instagram, just type in paycheck and we will make sure that you get this resource guide that's going to be really, really helpful for you in your journey to building your wealth. And for those of you guys that are category number two, I hope the tip that I shared with you with Zooming Out was really helpful. And by the way, if you've been listening to those episodes, if you've been listening to the podcast and you have yet to leave us a review, I would love to hear from you. So leave a review on any platform. Let me know what episode you loved and what you loved about it because those tips can be so, so helpful as we 
give you guys more and more information to help you build your net worth. So I just want to give you a quick shout out. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope this has been helpful for you. Enjoy, and I will see you on the next episode. And for those of you guys that are sending me a DM, I look forward to sending you the free guide in your inbox. Love you guys. I'll talk to you soon.